Hey everyone, it's Rylan. Um, it's... I'm blind. It's Thursday, August 16th at 8.08 in the morning. Um, and so I was thinking about what to make a video about today and I was like, I could go really heavy and like talk about mental health and how I've been sad and all that stuff. But I was like, I'm gonna switch gears and talk about acting today because just as big as my mental health is to my life, so is my acting, and so is my trans identity. Those are like the big three that like affect me, and then you know, obviously, I have interpersonal relationships, but those are like the big three of my life. So, I wanted to talk about five things that I wish I would have known um, when it comes to like pursuing a professional acting career. Um, so a little bit about me and my background with acting. I went to, um, a school that's gaining notoriety in the Midwest, um, for musical theater. I think it's, I don't know, it's on some, like, top ten list or some shit for musical theater. Um, finished my training there, got really lost in my life, and sold vacuum cleaners. <laughs> And, uh, computer supplies and printers and iPads for a minute until we got laid off the second week of me working there. Um, then I went back to school for communication. Then I thought I was going to go back to school for psychology. So it was like a really rough couple years. I was working at Chili's. I was, I had all these serving jobs, um, and then I went to the Atlantic Theater Company acting school here in uh, New York City um, back in 2016, 15, I don't know, something. Um, and now I have professional representation by a really well-respected management company. Um, and that's fairly new. That just happened literally, like, two weeks ago, so that's, like, really fucking exciting. Um, besides that, I've been on Off Off Broadway. I've been able to play my dream role already, which is Constantine in Anton Chekhov's The Seagull. Um, that was my first lead ever in my first New York role, and that was just, like, the greatest day slash, like, month of my life. Um, I really hope I can play that part again, um, just to, like, sink my teeth in it more. But that's a little bit about me, and the reason I'm going to specify that I consider myself a professional actor, because you might be sitting here and be like, well, he's not on Broadway, and, like, he's not on... I can't think of a TV show. He's not on Grey's Anatomy, so he doesn't matter. He's not a professional. Well... I'm not famous, but that doesn't mean that I'm not a professional actor. I consider being a professional actor as I, I'm drying my nails and they just got wet. I have professional representation. I'm constantly going on auditions and the level auditions that I'm going on are really fucking important. So that's kind of how I like designate my success and I've been paid. Yeah. So... Okay, that is enough about me. How long did I talk about that? Four minutes. Oops. Okay, so I don't have my glasses on because the glare is always really bad. So I have my list right here. So excuse me while I hold it this close to my face. Um, okay, so number one, what I wish I would have known. And this is going to sound really negative, but I'm going to follow it up with a positive for point two. But the truth of the matter is this. You're probably not going to get the part. I thought I understood what, like, rejection meant when, like, because that's all you hear when you want to be an actor and just about the acting business in general. Like, that's just, like, general knowledge that, like, rejection is real. But I've come to the point in my career after being an actor for 13 years that I know, and especially being in the professional world in New York for, like, a year and a half, to <laughs> just assume that you're not going to get the role. Your audition might go really well. The casting directors, as big as they may be, like the gigantic movies that they might have cast, as congenial as they might be in the room with you, 
you're probably not going to get the fucking part. And I know that might sound negative, and I'm sorry to all of you expiring, uh, aspiring, expiring, aspiring actors, but that's honestly the truth of the matter. That is the truth of this business. Now, that's not to say that you're not talented. It's not to say that you're not good, attractive, blah, 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 whatever enough. Um, but, yeah, the truth of the matter is, it's just, like, there's a lot of competition, and there's a lot of people that might fit the role better than you for an a plethora of reasons that have nothing to do with your talent. It could be simply, like, their height or like the color of their eyes or the tone of their speaking voice or like stuff that you have absolutely no control over. So when I go into an audition, I expect immediately I'm not going to get the part. I may want the part and be really excited about it and be like, oh man, like a Netflix TV show, how fucking cool would that be? And I might get my hopes up an inch, but I know that I'm not going to get the part. If I do, what a surprise, you know? And I know one of my friends was like, that's a really negative attitude to have. Like, you're not going to get the part. And I was like, okay. And then they hung out with me for two months and, like, understood that that's just how it is. Um, but along with that, the positive side of that, number two, what I wish I would have known, which I want you guys to know, is that the casting directors and the director, whoever's auditioning you, they want you to succeed. These people aren't sitting in the room for five fucking hours sitting there hoping to watch horrific auditions and hate their lives and be thinking about what they want to have for dinner. These people are sitting there for five hours hoping and praying to Jesus Christ that you're going to walk in the room and show them what's up and say, okay, that is the human being that we want for the part. They're not sitting there in malice. They want their job to be done. You know what I mean? So it's like, it is a supportive room, and I... This is just, like, on top thought. I can't think of a negative room that I've been in, because usually everyone's so nice, which is what's so confusing. Because people will be like, where are you from? Like, they'll make small talk with you, and, like, you'll think that you're vibing because, like, you're both from Wisconsin or something like that, and then you never hear anything back. Um, so they want you to succeed, but, um, again, that falls in with number one. That doesn't mean you're going to get the part, my love. Um, three, self-submitting is a pain in the goddamn ass. Self-submitting simply means one of the three main websites, Backstage.com, Casting Networks, and Actors Access. These are actors' resources in which you pay a certain fee. Some of them are different. Some of them you have to pay per submission. Backstage, I personally find, is the most, like, money conscious because you just pay a fee for the year and then you could submit for as many roles as you want, whereas I believe actors' access, you have to submit, like, each role that you want to pay. So it's, like, $2 for each role. So I think that's kind of, like, cost prohibitive, personally. But my managers use it, so, like, do your thing, y'all. Um, but just as, like, a poor actor, like, I can't be paying to submit for every role that I want that I'm probably not going to get. So self-submitting is a job within of itself. Um, personally, I would spend hours, like, daily checking the updates, seeing what's new, seeing if there was a role that was right for me. And luckily I've been able to lay off that now that I have new management and I just like, I don't want to anymore. But I've found two really great roles. Like I said, I got to play my dream role and I got to meet an incredible cast of people by doing an off off Broadway show. Um, so it's, you know, it's not for naught, but it is a really time-consuming process, and it can be pretty expensive depending on what website you have. I'm not going to recommend anything. Like, I'm not a spokesperson for anything. But I know that in the industry, my managers that I've had past and present have kind of, like, ranked which ones are which. Like, which ones are kind of more um, amateur-esque. Um, but I'm not here to, like, blast anyone, so do what you want. Um, 
What is the first floor? Um, so just because you have management and representation does not mean that you're going to make it. This is number four. I was under the guise that once I had a manager that, like, it was flashing lights, red carpet, signatures, and penthouse apartments. That's not the case. That's not the case. Um, if you are part of the small percentage, I'll say, like, five percentage of actors that actually do get representation. First of all, congratulations. You've like already beat the odds a little bit. But just because you have representation, whether that be a management or an agent, or both together, that doesn't mean that you're automatically going to make it. Acting requires a great deal of luck, opportunity, and training, and will. Um... And those aren't all in your control when it comes to, like, the luck thing. And, like, I've worked with a couple different managers. I'm on my third manager right now in the past, like, whatever, in the past amount of time. And I thought when I had those managers that, like, moving up kind of how important they were, that I would be getting more work. And although I did get bigger auditions for things that, like, actually matter, like... I don't, I'm not going to name drop, but just, like, networks that matter and theaters that are really big deals. Um, that doesn't mean that you're going to book those jobs in the first place. And, yeah, just, it's not tantamount to success. So I just want people to know that, like, again, congratulations is something to strive for. 100% get a fucking manager. Like, that is, you know, do that. Um, but just know that that doesn't mean that automatically you're going to find success. I remember one of my old managers used to say, oh, what was it? It would take like five years to get, like five years to get established and 10 years to get famous or something like that. So it's like, it's a recovery. It's a, not a recovery. It's a, I don't know. It's a process. And also with that being said, not everyone wants to be famous. Not everyone wants to be Angelina Jolie and Jennifer Lawrence interviewing Kim Kardashian on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Success looks different for different people. Some people might find success as simply working consistently in theater and being able to pay their bills. Some people might consider success only if they've been on Broadway, only if they've been in movies, only if they're making like six figures a year, only if they're making seven figures for a movie. There's different levels of what success can mean to you, so I think it's important, especially starting as an actor and still checking in in your career, of what does success look like me? What am I, what am I playing on? And with that um, comes number five, is that um, acting is an ongoing thing as far as like training and learning goes. You're never done... You're never done. Every show that I've ever done, I learned something new, not only about myself, because it is a self-learning crash course, but also, obviously, I learned more about acting and what my capabilities are and what my vulnerabilities are and what I need to work on. So it's continual training. If you can't afford an acting class because you're in, like, rural Oklahoma, you can still work on your acting. You can still memorize monologues and you can read aloud that's I mean that was one of the things my acting teacher would push is just like reading aloud and getting in the cycle of like just you know kind of rolling around words in your mouth that are unfamiliar which helps you for cold reads but also just helps you so it's like it's a never-ending process and with that you need to be committed. If you want to make this happen, if you want to be a professional actor to the degree of success that you want, you know, Jennifer Lawrence or just paying bills or whatever, you need to want this with, like, every fiber of your being. I always say, because I learned this in high school, if there's anything else you would rather do than act, that is what you need to be doing. If there's even a doubt in your mind that maybe you want to do psychology or, like, veterinary school or not do something that's a doctor, um, then pursue that because acting is ruthless 
it's tiring, it's exhausting, you're probably going to be poor for most of your life, um, and it's just like, it's something you, you have to really want within your soul, and to be able to like, give that energy of the rejection, and knowing that you can be the most talented person ever, and be right for the role, but you didn't get it for whatever reason, so those are my advices, tips of advice, um, I hope that this is helpful. I hope that I didn't discourage anybody and make them think that they can't be an actor. But these are just things that being in the industry for quite some fucking time that I've learned and that I just wanted to share with the YouTube ether. So I hope you guys have an amazing day and thank you so much for watching. Bye.